everyone to another fabulous corn cook along with the lovely Lisa Faulkner and corn super chef Stu Henschel. Uh, I believe this afternoon we are cooking a wow chili for a crowd. Is that right? We are. We're doing a lovely smoked corn chili. Um, yeah. Perfect for everybody. Really good at this time of year, I think. But but great. You know, coming back from school being starving and kids can get involved and I can see some children there so I hope you're going to be cooking as well yay okay so what do we need to do first right has every should we go through the ingredients Stu and make sure that everybody's got everything they need yes check everyone's ready so we've got some corn mints that we're using um then we have got let's go for our we've got an onion a pepper a chilli, which you can leave out. Um, I think your recipe probably says for half an onion and half a pepper, but actually if you've got a whole packet of the corn, you can use the full load and um, the full tin of tomatoes and that's fine. So either half it or cut it, doesn't matter. Um, and if it's too much, they can obviously freeze half as well. Absolutely, so yeah, that's, I mean, it fed my family last night. Um, they, they eat like gannets, but, um, <laughs> But otherwise, you can always freeze it. It freezes so well. And actually, it's brilliant the next day. Don't you think? It takes on the flavour even better. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we've got pepper, onion, chilli. Then we've got some sweet corn, tin of tomatoes, some garlic, some chipotle paste, some cocoa powder, cinnamon, smoked paprika, a little bit of oil. Um, and then we've got some avocados and some coriander and some mint, some chives and some sour cream or Greek yogurt or whatever you have. Yum, yum and yum again. So this is, this is a really easy recipe, a really delicious recipe. Got a few spices in there that just make it more vibrant. I think mm. it really brings that chilli to life. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but in our house, this is one of our favourite things to have, is chilli. Anything where you can pick things up, um, our kids love it. So, I'm, first of all, I'm, I was just about to put that on, but I realised I need to chop an onion. <laughs> so, if you get your onion, obviously, if little hands are chopping, then watch out and look after them. Um, but if big hands are chopping, I always cut, it, cut my onion in half and leave it on at the root, leave it so that you've got something to hold on to. And then peel off the first, oh, peeled off quite a bit there, the first few layers. Everyone doing okay with their onions? Everyone looks very busy. And the other half. We were saying earlier, weren't we, that the older the onion, the more sort of... That's it, the more layers you've got to go, to go back. But you can keep some, keep some of your trimmings and we can talk about that in a bit. Yeah, this is absolutely making me cry. I've got really bad hay fever today. <laughs> and, um, and now this is the strongest onion. So I'm just going to chop those little corners off. Keep it, st still keep it on at the root. And just a little tip. If I'm trying not to cry, I'm really sorry. <laughs> just a little tip. Your onion has lines on it, and it's a really good way, a really good guide of knowing if you were going to chop your onions finely, a really good way of knowing that you just follow with your knife the sort of lines of the onion, like so. That's a good tip. And then you just go down the whole way. If you wanted to, you can cut in half horizontally, but you really don't have to, especially if you're scared, if your knife is too sharp. I'm so sorry. <laughs> or if you're crying. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, and then you just chop the other way and you get nice, finely chopped onion. Oh. Like so. And if you're already doing half an onion, you're ahead of me. I'm going to have to get Stu to do this in a minute. Yeah. I'm alright. <laughs> Apparently sunglasses help, but I think you'd think I was being way too cool. Um, I'm just going to get a tissue because my eyes are absolutely streaming and I hope your onions aren't as bad as mine. <laughs> 
I'm not crying, honestly. Um, right, I'm going to wash my hands. Stu, mm. would you mind putting the, um, the hot uh, on while course. I just wash my hands? I'm so sorry. So as soon as we start getting the onions cooking, that sort of chemical reaction with your eyes will stop. So yeah. we're going to put in... We're proving that we're doing this live and that we're not eliminating anything yeah. that actually happens in real life. <laughs> exactly. That's it. Okay, so I've just got some oil here, some sunflower oil. About a tablespoon will do it. Yep. You want to jump back in? Thank you, my love. And just let that oil just start warming up. Actually, it doesn't really matter. It's quite nice to bring your onions up in that pan, it doesn't matter if it's a cold pan to start them, because you want to you want to build your flavour with your chilli. And it is one of those things that you can chuck everything in if you want to, chuck it all in and it will cook beautifully. However, if you just want to make that chilli, that even just to elevate your dish, then just take your time with these little first few steps. Because if you cook your onion nice and slowly, you will get such a lovely flavour. So you want it to be, to take that care with that onion, let it cook softly and slowly, and you'll get a real sweetness to that onion, as well as, otherwise it, sometimes it goes, if you cook it really fast, it's still quite crunchy and quite strong in flavour. This sort of smooths out the flavour. So we're just gonna soften that, and I'm now, um, once they start softening, we're going to add a couple of other bits. So we've got, are we all in with our onions in the pan? Have we done that? I should do a thumbs up so that I know you... Yes, good, brilliant. Um, I've got two cloves of garlic here. Um, you can feel free to cook it how you want to, chop it how you want to. My husband has a real aversion to garlic. Like he likes the flavour of it, but he hates finding bits of garlic in his food. So I grate it. Or if you really just quite like the smell of it but don't really want too much taste, smash it whole, put it in whole, and then um, and then you can take it out at the end. So you've got you still get that flavour, but you don't have the bits of garlic, especially with some fussy eaters that um, that are funny about things like garlic. And, and I'm so pleased to see kids cooking here today because I really think you younger ones. You've got to learn, you've got to take that bat on, haven't you, off your mums and dads and be the ones that are going to cook. And also the more that kids cook, I always think the more they eat, I really do. Um, they'll always try something they've, they've cooked, even if it's not something they love. Um, so, by all means, slice your garlic, scrunch your garlic up, smash it. I always use a grater, I find it the easiest, the easiest thing to, to do. So I just grate my garlic into my onions. It also takes out because of the germ in the centre of it, and you use a uh, garlic breast. Sometimes yeah. Sometimes it has that extra bitterness, doesn't it? The garlic. Yes, that's right. So grating it actually brings out a nicer flavour. Yeah, and I think that, you know, as long as you don't, you just be a bit careful with the grater at the end of the last bit of it, but my grater's has probably seen better days, actually. So, into my pan goes my garlic. And that smell already, I'm sure your kitchens are all smelling amazing already. There is something about garlic and onions cooking which makes me just feel like, oh, something good is about to happen. Um, and I'm going to make it even better by adding a chilli. Now, if you haven't got a chilli or you don't want to add a chilli, that's absolutely fine. If you want it really spicy, by all means, cut the chilli up and keep the seeds, seeds in. What we're going to do is just cut alongside the middle of the chilli like that so that you just sort of split it. And I'm just going to put that chilli in like that. So it just stays whole and it's going to come out. And if at any point... Well, you don't have... I mean, you can take the, the seeds out. And what that will do is just add... It's like a kick of heat at the back. You know when you taste something, at first of all, you get sort of a flavour of onions and a smoky flavour and then you get a little tiny kick at the end that's what that will do it won't give you that great big punch of flavour which is sometimes too much yeah especially for for um young families yeah and also if you've got your little ones there and they're trying it you can you can take it out at the point that they start to taste the spice you've got to control them 
rather than dumping in, you know, a load of chilli and then, you know, then refusing to be because it's too spicy. Absolutely. Um, on top of that now, um, while those onions, I'm just going to turn them down a bit, a bit actually, I'm only going, going for it. Um, I'm going to then add my pepper. Um, I've always found a really quick, not quick way, but just a way to cut pepper. People can have all sorts of ways. But I've always, a bit like the onions having a line, peppers also show you where to cut. So if you cut down the lines of a pepper, all the way down, in their little sort of grooves, like so, then you can flip it over and you can see it just sort of pulls off. So you keep all your seeds together and then you've got your pepper ready to cut up. Again, this needs to go in the uh, Lisa Faulkner kitchen tips book, please. <laughs> Just tip, everything, when, when I'm cooking at home, unfortunately my daughter who is 14, um, going on 24, um, doesn't, doesn't particularly like cooking unless it's something she's seen on TikTok and then she decides that she's going to cook, cook it. Um, and then it's usually weird and wonderful. But I sit and cook and I'm on one side and she's on the other and any bits like this of pepper that I don't put in to a chilli, it's gone. She's like a rabbit. Um, but I'm quite happy with that. And then I'm just going to chop my chip, my pepper, and I just chop it into rough lines, sort of equal dice, and then into the pan. And it won't take as long to cook as those onions, so just get it in as your onions are nice and slowly cooking. I'm sorry about my sniff sniffles. I don't know if anyone else has had bad hay fever this year, but mine has been terrible. And I was saying earlier to Stu, he was saying, you know, a few knife skills. And I said, oh, I don't think you'll get many knife skills from me. <laughs> you just get me chopping. I mean, I, I, I have had to work in restaurants and chop very finely, but... Um, but since the restaurants have, uh, I've stopped, stopped be having the time to cook in them, I've stopped worrying too much. And everything tastes good however it's chopped. I think that's the lovely thing about cooking, is that, and especially with families, I think you can sort of get very territorial over your kitchen and over your food and what it should look like. And actually, how brilliant is it when everyone's involved um, and things may not be as beautifully chopped as you want, but it will taste delicious. Well, and this is one of those meals, isn't it? Because there's so many little added extras that can be created to go with this that everyone really could have a job, couldn't they? Absolutely. And, and this is exactly what you said happened last night. So I made this chilli um, yesterday and then we had... Um, my daughter was on guacamole. The other one was on um, salsa. The other one was like mixing some sour cream and some chives together but it just means that everybody gets involved and I think that as your children get older it's really difficult to keep up the conversations they get as they get older they get more and more moody and not really wanting to speak and um and so it's a great dish for just sharing and being able to eat and play with food and find out more about their school day when when they're actually cooking or when they're actually building their tacos instead of that sort of thing of eating at a table. I, I always think if they're doing something, you get more out of them. So I'm just going to add my spices now. I've got some smoked paprika. So take all our spices and just sprinkle them into our pan. Um, we've got some cinnamon. A little bit of cinnamon. So yes, the two secret ingredients that I'm surprised about today are cinnamon and yep. cocoa. Yes, so the, the cinnamon is a lovely addition. It, it, it adds something, like a real warmth to the dish. It makes it lovely and warm. Then we've got chipotle paste, which I think actually adds another sort of depth of flavor. 
and then you're layering it up again with the cocoa which you've just put in sort of slightly, slightly further towards the end once I've got the liquid in and that cocoa might sound like an odd ingredient but actually really works it so makes your chilli so rich and delicious so just give it a go to these spices which I've just put in here I let them go for about just 10 seconds or so and then just add a splash of water um, I have a wonderful best mate called Dhruv and he cooks the most amazing spice, make, cooks with spice all the time and um, he's always told me just add, once you've add your, added your spices, add a splash of water and they really come alive in that pan because sometimes they can be a bit dusty and so that water just stops, stops them from being dusty and just makes them a little bit richer as we, as we say, you know, this chilli is it's got a nice punch to it. So that now our kitchen, that spoke paprika, I mean, I just, well, your kitchens will be smelling the same, I hope. Is it a thumbs up to the smell? Because they're pretty good, isn't it? Yes. If they're smelling good stuff. Oh yes, we've got lots of smiles. Double thumbs up. It's brilliant. It's such a lovely, lovely dish, I think. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt. And then I'm gonna add a tin of tomatoes. go and just give that a stir and then my corn mints can go in right. here so we've got we're using the frozen corn mints okay. it's absolutely brilliant don't have to defrost it just put and it you right don't have to brown it either it's just nice. ready to go and this, this is one of the things that people um, often potentially get wrong when they first start cooking off with corn mints is that they think it goes in at the beginning and needs that browning but actually it's, it's being made with all of that flavouring in there so that my, those Maillard flavours in there already um, so it just goes in at the end so you're actually looking at a slightly wetter sauce when it's going in than you would do if you're normally building it but with beef mints you tend to lose about a third of the weight with corn mints it stays the same so you can use about a third less than you would do normally as well yes yeah, so that that was really surprising to me the first time i used the corn was that i didn't need as much as i thought i would need it it stays what you see in the packet is what you get do you know what i mean whereas when you're cooking with like beef mints as you say it just reduces down and you sort of get especially if you cook it too much it's like this whereas the the Corn mints just work so beautifully. Um, corn though, I, what is it actually made from? Because we know that it's so much better for us. It's so lovely to be eating something that is, you know, meat free, that we're trying really hard, I think, to, to help the planet, yeah. to eat healthier, to eat less red meat. Um, but tell me what, it, what, it, what I mean, there is in it. Yeah, and this is the thing, you know, it's, it's, it's a product which is, you know, grown here in the UK. Um, it's actually made its primary ingredient a thing called mycoprotein, uh, which was discovered in the 60s um, when uh, a gentleman was looking for you know, an alternative protein that's going to potentially feed future generations. And what he discovered was that when it's combined with other proteins and with our core mints it's combined with egg whites, those two proteins together give these amazing um, textures which then can be uh, flavoured and um, in put into these different products, but essentially what it is is um, like the hyphae of the mycelium uh, from from fungus. Right, so, so a mush mushroom, mushroom, sort but of not mushroom. not the fruiting bodies, which is what you see on the top of, of of the ground with mushrooms, but all of that network underneath. And we and we and we grow this in Yorkshire, um, and yeah, it uses ninety percent of the um, less carbon footprint than beef. Um, you know, for for a family that's trying to reduce the amount of fat. Uh, in, in, and gets you know all of the protein, loads of fibre, and much it, lower cholesterol. I think it's amazing. I think, I, and honestly, we've done it before with people and not told them that they were having corn mints, and they knew they didn't. I mean, and they didn't know, and they'd eat it and say it was delicious, and afterwards they were like, "Oh, it's corn. It's not even meat." So I think that's really that's testament to the fact that it tastes. It, it holds its flavour, it takes on a great load of flavour and it's really, really delicious and got a very good texture to it as well, I think. Um, I don't know about you, but my sauce now, what I want to add to it is a little bit of water. I've probably got about, oh, about 100 ml that I'm gonna add. And then I'm gonna take out my chilli here because 
I don't want to make it too spicy. You could leave your chilli in or you can take it out if you want to. And then I'm going to add some sweet corn. Now another lovely thing um, that you've, you've put in here is sweet. In fact, I'll do the sweet corn in a minute. I've just seen, I'm just about to leave out. <laughs> Thank goodness everything's in front of me, I tell you. Um, the cocoa. Put your cocoa in now and stir it in and honestly, it's something you'll never go back with. I was just going to say it make it very popular with children if you tell them that there's chocolate in it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, exactly. And actually the cocoa is really good because it, obviously it's, it's dairy free, the cocoa, isn't it? Yeah. Just cocoa. Yeah, yeah. But you could, I, I have been known to use like a little bit of dark chocolate or even if I yeah, haven't had any, just a couple of squares of chocolate mm. on the top. And it does, it does the job. It's just, um, it's very, just adds a richness, as we say, and a sort of depth, earthiness, didn't yeah. you say, Stu? So now, after my cocoa's gone in, we're going to add sweet corn, which I think is a really lovely addition. Sometimes um, I find that uh, one of my children, I've got one child, but we're in a very blended family. So we have um, my stepchildren coming, lots of different people. They're of an age where they bring friends around all the time. And I sometimes see in chilies, there's a whole load of kidney beans left at the side of the plate where they've been picked out. Mm -hmm. But so, um, so instead we put sweet corn in and it, it works a treat, it really does. And also adds a, an extra bit of sweetness. And I think when you're dealing with a spice and you yeah. want to get families or children eating some things that are different, things that do have a bit of a kick to them, if there's something in there they recognize, then they'll definitely try it. And sweet corn is one of those things that I don't know many people that don't like it. If you don't like it, leave it out. But it, it is one of those things that a lot of people like. So that goes in and that just cooks away for about, well, 12 minutes. You, you, we can cook the, the um That's it. The so, you know, the, the corn goes in 12 minutes. It's, it's essentially just heating through. We also have the chilled um, the mint, which takes less time because it doesn't need to come from frozen. Um, now we've we've added the sweet corn, we've added the chilies, but without them, it's it's quite versatile base. This recipe for your spaghetti bolognese, any of those things you want to do, you can make it much more uh, saucy. Because this is going into tacos, we want a slightly drier mix because we don't want to spill it everywhere when it comes to eating. Because we're going to be eating with our hands. Yes. So that is that's sort of bubbling away. It's absolutely fine. I do find with this. You can cook it in the morning and then you reheat it later and there is something about leaving it and as we were talking about earlier like freezing it or having it the next day and it just tastes better. So the longer that you leave it the better it is but I promise you it will still be delicious when you eat it right now. Um, we've got some avocados here so we're going to make a few dressing little sort of sides to go on go with our tacos. Um, have you got your avocados or an avocado? Give us your avocados, ladies. Perfect. Don't you find that you either get them and they're really hard or they're so soft they're brown? I don't know what's going on with the avocados at the moment. Do you have any tips on how you can tell when it's, when it's right or not? Yeah, well, usually this little... Cal is this a calyx mm -hmm. as well? I don't know yeah. what it's called, but the stalk comes out. So if the stalk comes out, it's like that. It's usually ready. But you'll find in some supermarkets people have got wise to this and they've taken the stalk out. That's so naughty. It is naughty. Anyway, a, a little tip for cutting it is to cut it in half like that, like so. So you've got your, um, your avocado. What's happened to me? Gosh, sneezing, crying got your avocado and you then take a knife and then not right down to not so that you're scoring into the skin but just do a little diagonal like so and then either squeeze it with your hands and it will come out into the bowl or just get a, a spoon and then you've got those nice sort of chunks so you don't even need to, to chop it again take your, your um, pip out and again if you're making your avocado ahead of time just keep your pip in your guacamole and that will stay with, with well, it will stop it from going brown 
or grey as it goes really. Are we doing two of these? I think so, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, why not? Do you want to do one? Sure. There we it's go. Work. Yeah, we'll get Stu to work. <laughs> but it's nice squeezing these out. And, and also, I think, as we were saying, once your children turn to a certain age, they really don't want to talk to you. And all they do is sit on their phone or do something else. And actually, to get them cooking or get them talking about their day. And especially, you know, I think with COVID, we've had a lot of times with our children. Um, homeschooling which has been great but I think that they've probably found it I know mine have a lot harder than they thought and so it's really important I think that we are always are able to talk to our kids and open that conversation which isn't always easy so anything where you know I always find driving is really good for a conversation because you're not actually staring at your child and they're next to you and I think the same as I was saying is with eating so when you're talking about something that's not not maybe quite that easy if you're building your taco and putting your cheese on it and somebody's passing you the sour cream or somebody's passing you the, the guacamole there's other things going on at the same time and I think that really that really helps people to to be able to talk about things and I think as families you know that's what we want isn't it yeah so I think that's pretty much our my chili our chili I'm just turning it down it's pretty much done we're going to add a nice squeeze of lime to our wok. Um, I'm just rolling it on the board. Another little tip is to put it in the microwave for 30 seconds, but be careful if you do. Um, but just give it a roll and it will then juice up. You can sort of feel it getting juicier. That's one for the children. You can roll those limes and make them nice and juicy. Like so, and then cut that we're going to squeeze our lime in. Like so. And we're going to add, could you please add for me while I wash my hands the mm -hmm. salt? And then we're going to chop some, a little bit of coriander to go in there. Okay, do you want me to do that? Yeah, if you don't mind, I'll just, I'm just going to wash my hands because I literally grabbed that lime. Um, if you don't like coriander, lots and lots of people have an aversion to it, which I don't understand because it's my favourite thing. Um, but if you don't like it, leave it out absolutely fine. It's just the sixth of people, actually. It, it tastes like soap. And it's a... A sixth, one sixth. Sick, yeah. So feel free to leave, leave, leave this out. It's not essential. It, obviously it's used in a lot of Mexican and Spanish cooking. Just roll it up so you get a bunch. And then go along like that. Oh, the smell of that is just amazing. Oh, we're putting some mint into our um, I really into our like guacamole. A bit of mint. What a lovely idea to add some fresh mint. Um, and another, uh, this is just a little tip I learnt for for chopping mint. And you can chop it any way you want to. But if you get the le your leaves, your mint leaves, and you just put them on top of each other, so you get a sort of layer of mint leaves, like so. What's that special noise that's happening? <laughs> we'll ignore it. Um, so you've got your little layers of mint leaves. I've probably got about seven or eight there. And then you just roll them up like so. So you've got a little sausage, a mint leaf sausage. And then you can just cut them into fine little ribbons like that. Again, little fingers are going to love that rolling it into a sausage. Yes, they? and then big fingers can take over the chopping. Absolutely. So then we're going to add, we've added our mint as well. Mm -hmm. Should we add another squeeze of lime? Why not? Let's go for it. I think this is the other thing, is I, I always love cooking a recipe. And then when you've made it once, if you haven't made it before, the next time you go to it and you go, I really like that, but I actually want more lime or I want more mint mm -hmm. or I don't want to take, I want to want the chi I want more chili in it or I want kidney beans, not sweet corn. And you can then ch take that recipe and make it your own. And that's what's so fantastic Definitely. about cooking, isn't it? Definitely, you can add a bit it? of garlic to it as well. Or, um, you know, if you want to add any, any more fat to it, you can add a bit of olive oil or... Whatever you want to do, yeah. make it your own. I'm just going to get a spoon for our for our guacamole. 
So that. Like the pip. Yeah, let's stick our pip in there so that doesn't go brown. So our guacamole is done. And we've got some sour cream here. We haven't got sour cream actually, have we? What have we got? We've got a creme fraiche. Yes, we've got and we've got an oat creme fraiche. So we're sticking sticking to vegan, but we are, well, we're doing veggie, aren't we? We're doing veggie because the mince the mince is veggie Sorry. at the moment. Yeah. But you've got plans. Well, we do, yeah. We have a vegan mince coming out next year. And we also, in September, through our other brand, um, Cauldron, um, we have a vegan mince coming out in September as well. Exciting. Fantastic. To, just to liven up this little creme fraiche, we were just going to chop some chives. Perfect. So it's just an extra little thing. I, I, I would love a herb in everything if I could. I, I think herbs are so, we don't use them enough in this country. And if you put them in salads, they're just amazing. You know, you can add mint, dill, chives, put them all in, and it's, they're just so delicious. I think people sometimes tire of having to throw away half bags of coriander when they've turned black and things like that. Yeah, and coriander is one of those that actually doesn't freeze very well at all. Mm. Whereas a lot of, heart, of chives do freeze well. Now, you were telling me... A really good tip, weren't you? Yeah, so if you, For... you know, if you don't think you're going to use all of your herbs, just to chop them all up nice and fine, and then mix them with some olive oil or, or melted butter, and then fill up a nice cube tray with them, and then you've got a nice little flavour bomb ready to start a, start a dish with next time you come to cook in. I love it, a flavour bomb. I'm just going to put those on the top like that, and then we can mix them in if we want to. Love it. Yeah? Yeah. So, our chilli is delicious and cooked. Give it a little taste. Check if you want to add a little bit of salt or pepper. I think you'll find it's great. Um, our guacamole is done and ready. We've got our creme fraiche with some chives on the top. And we've got some cheese. Yum! Grated cheese. Um, also, we've put into the oven, we've got some tacos, the crispy tacos. Um, you could go soft tacos. But I think what's lovely with this is that because you've got soft um, corn mints and you've got the guacamole and the sour cream, what's really nice then is that you get that crunch of taco and that it doesn't matter that you're going to make a mess because you're just with your family and it, you know, you all can get a big tea towel and stick it round you, which is what we do in our family. And the tea towel is orange by the time we finish. But everyone has eaten a lot and really enjoyed it. And I think that's one of the most important things. It sure is. So, our little tacos. I'm sure you know this, but when, you're, when you cook them, just cook them down like that way down in the oven. So they get extra crispy. Yeah, so they get extra mm. crispy. But then we're going to, so we're going to build our tacos and try yeah. and make them look as... Okay. As uh, chefy and pretty <laughs> as so what, we can. One of the things I like to do is, if you have like two egg cups or two little glasses between them, start in the centre, start building your one up there. Look at that, <laughs> that's brilliant. He just knows all the tricks, doesn't he? He certainly does. And so we're going to build our taco, start with a little bit of our corn mints and you know the fact that it's from frozen but you can refreeze it it's absolutely fine isn't it once it's cooked yeah absolutely i mean if you if you've made uh, made the meal and you think you've got too much there just let it cool down um, and then put it in um, in a freezer bag try and get as much air out of it as possible roll it and then seal it at the top because the, the air is the issue when, you, when, you, when you're freezing things because you get water migration. That's where it comes out and you get ice crystals and things like that. That's the same for all foods. Right. Um, so it's just trying to get things in as, as little air space as possible when you put them in the freezer. And then you've got a meal for another day. And, you know, you can take it on whichever Brilliant. journey you want journey you want to, whether you want to make a spaghetti bolognese or anything. Super versatile. A brilliant tip. A little bit of the creme fraiche on top. Oh, and finish it off with some cheese and we can finish it off with a bit of coriander if you wanted to and we're just going to build a couple more tacos and hope that you're all having fun building yours. It looks incredible. Just this is very good. I need to move to one side. I don't know why I've decided to use the smallest spoon <laughs> I, I have found in the kitchen. Um, 
This is, this is one of those meals that I have to say, my, when my dad comes over, which is finally, he's allowed, it's amazing, and we say we're having tacos, he's like, because mm, he hates being messy and thinks, you know, that we should eat with knives and forks. And we're like, Daddy, get rid of the knives and forks. You've just got to use your fingers. So the kids all love it. And my dad's there going, mm, yes, but it's so messy and I can't eat it. Use a spoon if you want to. <laughs> it's, it's still lovely. Now, we've had a question from one of our guests, which says, if we don't have creme fraiche, we can use yogurt, can't we? Absolutely. absolutely. Go on. Yeah, no, absolutely. And anything you want to, to put in it, you know, if you wanted to make a salsa with some chopped up tomatoes and red onions, you can you can do whatever you like with your tacos. Um, and certainly in terms of creme fraiche or yogurt, they're all going to work really well. Yeah. We don't usually tell our children what the topping is. We just put it on the table and it's usually, it's either yogurt or creme fraiche or sometimes, sometimes sour cream. Whatever we can get, we just put it in the bowl and they don't really notice, they just stick it on. Well, that's what's so perfect about this is it's so versatile. You don't necessarily have to have the same ingredients every time, do you? No, absolutely not. And you can leave, you can leave bits out. Um, you know, if you don't like peppers, don't put peppers in. If you want to add... A secret vegetable you know you can always really blitz up some courgette or broccoli and blitz up really really small and stick it in there nobody will know you yeah. know it's like when you're doing spag bol you can do the same with the chili if you've got a uh, food process and you're wanting to bulk it up as well you can always blitz up a load of mushrooms fry those off and mix them through it I've, uh, my, my son hates detests mushrooms um, but he's been eating bucket loads of mushrooms and he every has week. No and idea. Has no idea. Oh, oh, parents are so <laughs> sneaky. Has anybody got any more questions? Well, any more questions, or are you all just desperate to dive in and start eating? I can see that a few people have already. Have you ever started eating? They have. Look, thumbs up. Look at those. They look amazing. Oh, that one looks so pretty. So fantastic. Right. Well, well done, everyone. I'm going to leave you to stuff your faces with those amazing looking crispy tacos. And Stu and Lisa, thank you so much again. Thank you, guys. It's been lovely cooking along with you. I hope you've really enjoyed the day. It's been fun. I hope you've taken a few bits out of it. I hope you'll cook it again. I hope you use the corn mints, which is amazing. And happy taco eating. Mm -hmm. Look at that I face. I'm about to tuck in. Amazing. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.